Welcome to another exciting edition of The Trading Bell. Today on the program, we'll be talking matters publishing, and I'll be hosting Mr. Maxwell Wahome, the Chief Executive Officer of Longhorn Publishers. But before we get into that discussion, let's begin by taking a look at his profile. Maxwell Wahome is the Group Managing Director for Longhorn Publishers PLC, a position he has held since September 2018. He previously served the company as a Chief Financial and Operations Officer, a position he held for two years. Maxwell is an expert in finance and strategy, having previously worked for over 10 years at PricewaterhouseCoopers Nairobi and Johannesburg. He also has vast experience in the manufacturing, service, mining and FMCG sectors. He holds a Bachelor of Commerce degree accounting from the University of Nairobi. He is a certified public accountant and a certified information systems auditor. He is currently pursuing a master's degree in strategic planning from the Harriet Watt University, UK. Thank you, Mr. Ahome, for joining us on the show. New look, new tidings for the publishing sector as well. Uh, thank you for having me, Abby. It's a COVID-driven changes. <laughs> yeah. Great to have you again on the program. And yeah. um, I mean, 2021 was a turbulent year for different organizations. Uh, especially companies that also have listed at the stock exchange. Just give us an assessment of how 2021 has been for the publishing industry. Where do you fall in this? Okay. So first, uh, just to give you a bit of background, our company runs uh, uh, July to June year-end. So the last part of 2020 was, of course, a very difficult one, uh, with most of the schools being closed for the larger part of 2020 mm -hmm. and uh, early part of 2021. Yeah. But I'm happy with the way the industry has uh, adapted to these changes. Of course, certain things have worked to our favor, such as a resumption of uh, the normal school calendar. Of course, it's a compressed calendar. But this has given us an opportunity to get our business on track and uh, get back to uh, get our heads above the water. So uh -huh. I'm, I'm quite positive about the way things are going. All right. Yeah. Do you see any blip in how the yeah. business performed during this year where we saw schools having closed? Definitely. Uh, we, with most of the publishing industry, I mean, like company, uh, the biggest uh, segment is education publishing. So when learning is disrupted, and uh, it was disrupted uh, for most of the countries that we operate in, uh, the last it was actually Uganda, where they're still closed until January 2022. Mm. We saw a huge dip in, in revenues, but we started adapting to new ways of uh, getting to our market through either online channels mm -hmm. or through other means of the distribution. All right. Yeah. And, uh, as days go by, I know Kenya's education system was uh, reopened, uh, of course, uh, very compressed terms. I've seen quite a lot of uh, comment on this. But uh, just walk us through how ICT became a key pillar for investors in the publishing industry. How did you leverage on this as an organization? I think Longhorn was uh, in a much better position when it comes to uh, digital preparedness. Uh, so when the pandemic hit in March 2020, we saw this as a perfect opportunity to uh, stress test our online platforms. So we offered a uh, number of our online platforms for free so that we could first ensure that learning continues during this pandemic, but also learn more about our customers. So within a period of uh, between March 2020 and, uh, uh, and April, uh, April, May 2020, we saw a huge surge of, uh, uh, of, of new people joining into the platform. Uh, we had over 200,000 new subscribers coming in. Of course, the platform we offered it for free, but we got to understand the trends. And uh, this has, uh, has now played a crucial part in, in the upgrades that we're now doing to our platforms, which will make our platforms now more stable, uh, provide the value that our learners are looking for, and generate the revenue that, we, uh, that uh, we have anticipated. And uh, how big is uh, mm. the digital uh, revolution likely to impact the publishing sector? Do you see any major opportunities in this front? The opportunities are immense. 
uh, uh, I target that uh, in the next three years, at least 20% of our revenues will come from uh, digital platforms. And you can see that, uh, you can see the signs. The digital awareness uh, of our ladders and our teachers has grown significantly since the pandemic started, which is a good sign. Uh, there are various other things that the government is doing to make the industry, uh, the, the digital space grow in terms of uh, broadband, broadband connectivity and devices. So I definitely see a huge uptick in the coming uh, uh, one to three years. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you see opportunity in this, Mr. Ahome, mm -hmm. uh, how much are you looking to invest in, in your digital channels now that you're seeing a significant shift? Digital is an interesting space in that uh, unlike the traditional publishing where we were working alone, in digital you cannot make it alone. You need partnerships you need a different financing model. So what we started looking at is how we can structure a venture studio kind of structure where we allow outside investors to come and work with us in growing separate digital ventures. You've seen globally the, some of the biggest tech companies have had to go through several rounds of fundraising to get to the level that they expect to be. So I do not expect to fully finance the digital growth from our internal cash. I will be allowing investors to join in and we grow separate digital ventures that can be, that we can spin out from the main entity and they become separate businesses. I like that. Mm -hmm. And I'll be taking you more on, on that as we mm -hmm. progress. And uh, getting back to our conversation around uh, the enormous shifts you've seen in the education space. Of course, there's a competency-based curriculum um, which has led to a lot of uh, uncertainty in some quarters among parents, uh, among learners, and uh, you can always see Kenyans talking about the CBC, the kinds of assignments kids, uh, uh, school going kids are getting. And, um, but the bigger conversation for me is how have publishing companies uh, aligned themselves with this new curriculum? And in the event that this issue goes to court all the way up till it is reversed and we go back to 844. What, are, what is at stake for you guys? Okay. So first I would say um, uh, CBC, the competence-based curriculum, uh, that train has left the station. <laughs> no turning back. Uh, no turning back. That uh -huh. train has left the station and it is indeed a good curriculum. Uh, one of the, the things that people should look at uh, what competencies are we building in these learners? When you talk about critical thinking, problem solving, collaboration, communication, these are very soft items or, uh, or soft values that you are building in learners that will go a long way in building a society that is self-sufficient, uh, uh, very driven towards building the economy. So it is a new culture we are trying to build. And in such a situation, there of course will be resistance to change. Uh, I do empathize with, uh, with parents who have to uh, do one of these weird uh, homeworks, build a scarecrow mm -hmm. uh, without any preparation. Uh, Draw your governor. <laughs> <laughs> you, you've gone through that. Yeah. So what is going to happen is all this feedback that you are collecting, we are going to incorporate it in improving the quality of uh, the materials that that you are, that, that you are, that you are preparing, mm -hmm. and also uh, uh, dealing with these small teething issues that are there. Teething issues must be there, and you, if you recall when the uh, when the free primary education was introduced back in uh, in zero three, there were many people who said it would fail. Yeah, but after a few years, we now believe it's the best thing that has happened to this country. So. The same you can expect with CBC. There are some teething issues which the ministry is looking to streamline and will make this system very seamless. For us as publishing houses and content developers, uh, we are keenly listening to the feedback and improving on the simplicity of these activities that uh, learners are doing and making sure that every new grade uh, that you go in the, the complexity of the activities is, is much less. Mm -hmm. So uh, there, there will be great times ahead. Okay. Yes. So looking at CBC, um, so far 
What kind of uh, uh, shift has it put for publishers? Because in the event anything is reversed, I know for the publishing industry it's a major blow. Mm -hmm. So the publishing industry, we've actually invested a lot. Um, and CBC, we are now halfway in the implementation. We are now going to grade seven. So that's more than halfway in the implementation. Uh, I, I would not want to anticipate a situation where this would be reversed. Mm -hmm. But you should still remember the fact that we still have the IP, the intellectual property, for the 844 books. The content is still there, even though we haven't printed the, the inventory. Sure. So whichever situation happens, uh, I do not foresee uh, a, a significant dent in, in our operations. But as I said, that train left the station. Mm. I do not expect anything uh, to shift negatively. And the opportunities we, in whichever curriculum are there. Because for us, we are looking at, uh, we are a content business. So we look, the content that was still there even before needs to be improved. So I don't see a loss. All right. Yeah. Allow me to take you back to an, a point you made earlier on mm -hmm. about uh, the future of the digital space for publishers. And uh, as a country, we've been enjoying uh, quite some major milestones, especially when it comes to fiber optic connectivity in the country, um, a bit of uh, improved uh, power access, even at the rural level. So we are seeing day by day some growth uh, trajectory, especially when you look at uh, equipping uh, centers of learning. And the other conversation that goes unspoken about is as we go towards the e-books, there's also the big challenge of piracy, which literally would wipe out opportunities for publishers like yourself. For instance, we are in the media industry where we have a daily publication of a newspaper. We also have an e-version of the paper. What stops people from sharing the already put together content? What safeguards are you likely to be putting in place because it's a very volatile area in terms of just managing this content that you've put in a lot of work. And because I have my email, I can easily share with you a book. I can send it to you on WhatsApp. How do you safeguard this ecosystem and ensure that there's value for money at both the buyer level and at the publisher level? And of course, just ensuring there's data privacy. Okay. So. Piracy will always be a risk, uh, whether the physical book or uh, the online platforms. But what we are looking at is solutions that are uh, ideally more integrated, more, more intuitive, so adaptive learning. I do foresee a time where those e-books will be free. And uh, many countries are moving towards uh, open content. So what we are looking at is what other solutions can we be able to build that will now be the value addition, that is what we'll be pricing. So whether the book is given for free, it will not matter very soon. Mm -hmm. What other solutions can we get? Can you be able to get the statistics, uh, the learning statistics of, of, of the students? Can you be able to see what are the areas of uh, complexity or difficulty for the specific learner? So that's the adaptive learning. That one you cannot get from a pirated book. So you need to be part of the system in order to enjoy the other services. All yeah. right. And as we finish off, uh, you did mention that uh, the company is going towards partnerships and collaboration when you look at investing in the digital space. Yes. You are a listed company. Mm -hmm. Are we likely to see some activity at the stock exchange mm -hmm. now that you've mentioned uh, there's intention to go that route? Yes. So uh, at the uh, last year's AGM, we got approval from our shareholders uh, uh, to incorporate uh, a subsidiary in Delaware, uh, which, we have, which, which we've built with uh, our partners in the US uh, called Akili. So these are venture builders. We are looking at such avenues to be able to attract financing, not just locally, but offshore financing, the US market, people who are already steps ahead in mm -hmm. technology. For Longhorn to be uh, a successful education technology business, we need to attract partners who have the financial capability and the technical capability. When you look at the African landscape, 
there is no one there's no single education technology company that you'd say has dominated Africa Longhorn will be that company mm -hmm. and for us to get to that level we need investments both technical and, finan uh, and financial that will get us to that level so th you will definitely be expecting to see a lot more discussions at our annual general meeting when it comes to structuring new di uh, digital ventures and digital ventures are, are, are many that we can venture in. All right. Yeah. And as we wrap it up, uh, mm -hmm. your strategic outlook for 2022, mm -hmm. of course, we are still a few months into the new year. Yeah. What, what do you see in the crystal ball? Very positive. Uh, it's a very positive. We've managed to successfully enter Cameroon uh, in a big way. Year-on-year -year growth, I'm expecting double-digit uh, growth. Uh, very soon, we'll be entering Ghana, where we've started developing content. And this is KTN News.